Hi everybody. I wanted to talk to you today about the multipole expansion. But please understand that in order to truly understand this video, you're going to have to watch the lecture on the dipole moment um, that I have first. So make sure to watch that one if you haven't already. Um, so go through the list and watch that one first. Now what we did in that lecture, just to do a brief summary though, was we found the um, electric field and the electric potential at some random point in a plane, which I called P here, for a dipole. Now remember that a dipole is a positive and a negative charge here, separated some, by some distance. And remember that in that lecture, we assumed that the distance from the center of the dipole to the observation point, which I called R, that that distance was much, much greater than the distance in between the charges, which I called L, okay? And also you could characterize the um, electric field in terms of the angle theta from the dipole to the observation point. So there was an angle theta there that characterized what the uh, potential and electric field magnitude was there as well. Now, at the end of that lecture, um, I'm only going to address the electric potential or the voltage here. We ended up with an expression for the electric potential for a dipole that looked like this, 2kq over r times l over 2r cosine theta plus l over 2r cosine theta cubed plus l over 2r cosine theta to the fifth, and then it just kept on going, okay? So this is actually an infinite series that we got from a Taylor series expansion, okay, um, of the expression that we ended up with for our electric potential. Now to remind you, k here is the Coulomb constant, which is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth in SI units. So this is where we were at the end of that lecture. <clears throat> now I'd like to point out that you can do this kind of calculation for the electric potential for any collection of point charges, all right? So it doesn't have to just be a dipole. You could do it for multiple charges as well, many charges. And then you could find the potential at some point P due to those charges. And you could do an expansion similar to the one that I show here, all right, for, for that collection. Now, if you do that, then you might notice that um, in our lecture, we truncated um, and just found, kept the first term in this expansion. In other words, we approximated our potential as 2kql over 2r squared cosine theta, and the twos canceled out. So we just kept that first term there, all right? But depending on how you know, good your approximation you want, you might need to keep higher order terms, okay? Now this kind of thing is called a multipole expansion. So I want to explain uh, some of the nomenclature for a multipole expansion. So for example, you might end up with different kinds of terms in your multipole expansion. Now we just ended up with the terms shown here in our lecture on the dipole. But if you end up with a term that is proportional to the charge divided by the distance r, right, q over r, then you have what's called a monopole term. If you have a term that's proportional to ql over r squared, of course times some constants there, that's fine, just like in r's, but proportional to ql over r squared, then you have a dipole term, okay? If you have a term that's proportional to ql over r cubed, then you have a quadrupole term. And if you have a term that's proportional to QL over R to the fourth, you have an octopole term. And of course, it goes up from there, okay? Higher order terms can also be kept, and then those have names. But I'll just stop there, all right? So if you look at our expansion that we did for two charges, plus and minus Q separated by um, L, you can see that we have a dipole term. We don't have a monopole term, right? But we do have a dipole term. And then we would also have a term that's proportional to 1 over r to the fourth, and so we would have an octopole term in our multipole expansion of this potential, all right? So what do these other terms mean, and where did these names come from? Okay, well, the, the monopole, of course, would be just due to one charge. So if you look here, sorry, I skipped forward a little too quick. If you look here, if your potential is proportional to Q over R, that's the kind of potential that you would expect from just one point charge, right? And so hence the term monopole term, because you just have one pole, one positive or one negative charge, right? 
The dipole term we already talked about pretty extensively, okay, because that would be the lowest order term in this series. And so if you just had a dipole, a plus and a minus charge, then you would have a term that looks like this and your potential is your lowest term, dipole, okay? So now let's talk about what quadrupole term might mean, okay? Well, quadrupole term, the way that the simplest conception of the quadrupole usually goes is it looks like this here on the right. You have alternating positive and negative charges, four of them, and then oftentimes in the simplest configuration, people just put them in a square, like here. And if you do that, then the electric field lines can be pictured as shown here in this diagram with these blue lines, okay? And so that would give you a lowest order term that has um, this QL over R cubed in it, where L would be the distance, characterize the distance between the charges within the square, all right? So that's an ideal quad, um, quadrupole. It's worth mentioning that other arrangements of charges and different numbers of charges even can still give you a quadrupole moment in your expansion. For example, if you have this um, uh, right here, where you have two Q in the center and then uh, oppositely charged Qs on either side, that's called a linear electric quadrupole moment. Okay, and that'll give you a term that's proportional to QL over R cubed. So basically, it's just the power of R here that we're worried about for the quadrupole. But if you're wondering where the name came from, it might look like this configuration of charges on the right, and that's usually the first picture that pops into people's heads. But any kind of multipole expansion, anything that has that proportionality to QL over R to the third, that's gonna be our quadrupole term. Okay, so what about octopole? Well, here's a picture, uh, what people often picture for an octopole. You've got eight charges with alternating positive and negative um, sign, and then that creates an electric field as shown here in this diagram. And that would have an octopole moment. In other words, the lowest order term in that expansion would be proportional to QL over R to the fourth there, okay? Um, now, yet again, you can have other configurations of charges, even different numbers of charges, all right? But as long as that proportionality is there to QL over R to the fourth, it's an octopole, okay? For example, the thing off the top of my head that I can think of when I think of an octopole usually is a cube and then uh, positive and negative charges on the corners of the cube, right? Like maybe a sodium chloride ion um, crystal, right? With the uh, sodium and the chlorine um, ions on the corners of the cube. I might think of that, okay? So that's where the terms came from. Eight charges is an octopole, right? And this sort of thing also happens with magnetics, uh, magnetic fields. So if you have a north pole and a south pole of a magnet arranged in some kind of configuration here, then that can give you a magnetic field that might look like this as well. So you can have octopoles and quadrupoles and so on and so forth with magnetic fields too. Okay, now just remember though that these higher order terms can show up in the expansion even if you don't have, for example, for the quadrupole four charges. We had a um, octopole term, right, with just an electric dipole. So those higher order terms are still called octopoles or quadrupoles or whatever pole you're looking at if they show up in the expansion, even if you don't have that many charges, okay? And that's called the multipole expansion. So you've now looked at the multipole expansion for an electric dipole, okay? Now for homework, we've assigned a quadrupole problem, all right? And you're going to do that one. Okay, I hope that clears some things up and um, I'll see you in class.